ya vuelta, espera que ya vuelta. Ahora. for a yacht on uh, the Vela Latina, just rig the uh, lanteen sail on a big lump of wood which is held up by a big lump of wood which we float in a big lump of wood, it's pretty cool. Um, so they're a bit worried that uh, we're maxed out with breeze, nearly 15 knots of breeze and so they've asked for my big fat butt to come along and um, be a bit of ballast today. So it should be really good fun. Um, yeah, we'll see see what happens. There's lots and lots of ah, blah blah blah. Not much action, action, action. But uh, it's all it's all good fun. Uh, yeah, we've, we've got the maestro. Where's where's the maestro? Here's the maestro, Miguel, telling them all what to do. It's uh, very very funny. Quite cool. Very cool to see uh, the old master there telling the young chumps what they should and shouldn't be doing. <laughs> we'll see how it all goes. Sure is sailing again! Very happy now, Shane, and we, we really appreciate your help today. You know, New Zealand team. <laughs> Eric, saluda. Woo! Champagne. This has sunk three times so far because um, the hull, it, the fiberglassing wasn't good enough. Because if you come up close, you can, there's all these little holes and um, water would come in, and then it, then it sank three times. So we're currently helping our friend Miguel um, properly seal the bottom of the boat so that uh, it won't sink again. So here's a classic example of. Um why you need to uh, pre-fill or fair out where you're laminating. Here a friend of ours has been laminating his old um, Bella Latina and it's quite rough and rugged. We've got lots of holes and bumps and lumps and sharp corners to go over. Um, and you can see here where somebody's actually tried to laminate before and there's a massive air bubble under the glass between where the, the timbers are, are joined together. So I'm going to try and finish off this last little bit here and show how it's done, how we would, pre would prepare this really unideal surface. So you can see there's uh, copper nail holes, nails in the glue, uh, holes in the glue where the splines haven't quite gone deep enough, uh, cracks in the timber and lots of hard corners. So I've mixed up some um, resin and microspheres uh, to make a sort of a honey type consistency and I'll backfill all this so it's ready to laminate over. Of course I'm limited with my materials and all the rest. Normally I'd have um, some tape at the bottom between where I'm laminating here and the and what's remaining of the white paint but um, no real such luxury so I've just got to be a little bit careful that I don't put resin all over the paint on the top sides so by wiping this 
we get um, smoother transitions over all of these hard, lumpy, bumpy places and we end up with much less air bubbles under our um, laminate. And because it's a splined timber boat, is it going to move much? Um, I no, so. normally I'd say no. In this case, possibly though, because it's um, the lines don't seem to be very deep or very well glued in. But um, it definitely is. It, it moves less than a corked job for sure. It looks pretty solid. And is the chop strand the right choice? Um. For timber, the chop strand not so much, but more the resin system uh, with timber. I generally don't recommend using polyesters um, because the cure is quite incomplete, but we are very limited with what materials we have available to us here. Um, and we're working with something that's pre-existing. So, um, a little bit snookered in that department, but um, it's, it's what we have to work with, so we do the best that we can. And what are you doing? What's Dad got you to do? You've got to smooth all of this? Uh, yeah, I basically got to fill in all the potholes that's leading to the wood so it doesn't rot out and um, it doesn't sink again. Because this rubber machine has sunk three times already. One of the good things with priming up is I've actually got something sticky to stick the, uh, the mat to. So it's, it's, it's actually a little bit of wind here and it stops it from uh, blowing around and blowing off. The roller that I'm using is a mohair style of, of roller. Um, it's generally a lot more durable when de dealing with um, polyester resins and because it's quite prickly it's also quite good for um, bubble bursting and getting rid of the air at the same time. Uh, it's a little bit nicer than the foam rollers and the, the really thick nap uh, fluffy rollers, they tend to sort of just uh, throw resin and, and make bubbles. <laughs> they seem to make be more of a problem than uh, they make more of a problem what, than what they fix. Have you got it all out of the pot? Not all of it. Just get all the rest of it out of the pot. You done? Good. Next part is the keel. Yep. So I'm going to run a bit more down the keel. You'll notice I'm not using scissors here with the chop. I'm just actually tearing the edge. Uh, this is actually a more desirable way to cut your, your chop. Having a hard edges with chop strand is not actually as good. Harder to, do, harder to deal with. Yeah, so the, the but it's completely different with um, multi-axials. Multi-axials, you um, are a lot more precise, whereas the chop strand, having these softer, furry edges, they um, blend into themselves much, much nicer. struggling to um, get it all to wet out properly. Consolidating roller would be pretty handy here but we don't have so we may do. And are you just being as generous as you can with the resin because it looks like a lot of resin. Yeah because because it's chop strand we generally run 60 to 70 percent resin to um, 
30-40% glass whereas it's actually the opposite way around when we use our multi-axials generally 50-50 is a really wet um, layer whereas in uh, this chop strand stuff and this is why chop is quite quite a heavy uh, and not so strong option is that it's primarily resin. mostly resin with a little bit of fiber reinforcing whereas when we use our multi axials we pack way more fiber into the laminate than we do resin and the resin is basically just there to hold the fibers together that's the fibers that do all the work whereas in this case it's um, much of a muchness how much resin no. does the work so last bit Okay, so now you're done with the resin? Yep, yeah, um, tried to seal up as much of the cuck as I could, trying to make it as waterproof as possible. But um, we are quite limited in resources. So we've done the best we can. to get it finished. Laminate it in the morning, paint it at lunchtime, sail it this afternoon. <laughs> oh, I think I think you might I think you might be onto something there, hey? <laughs> yeah. Next level. You ran out of blue antifouls, so now we're putting some of the Pikea grey stuff on. Yep. Rough and ready. So I was, I was laminating this this morning. Painting the top sides at lunchtime. Handy foul this afternoon. <laughs> Ready for sailing tonight. What did you do this morning? Um, um, we bought the little Martina out. It was flipped over right there, upside down. So that's the flowers there. I'll eat the snows, yeah. Flowers there. Picked the bells, got them all the way up there, moved up to the a bit, so it was about here. Rat number one, <laughs> build rat number two, it's actually just pulling a string, super high tech, Flex, flexi top mast, <laughs> nearly taking out the kayaker in the process. <laughs> hey Patron, tu bien? <laughs> So we trim the, the sail by rotating the lantana uh, around the mast, so we're going downwind. So you can see the tack of the sail is actually off the bow, and as the puff comes on, oh, I've got to ease it, my telltale say I'm stalling. So I ease, 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 whoop, until I try and get it to attach, there it is, telltale flowing. And the boat speeds up, creates a bit of a parent, and I've got to pull it back on again, just like any other race boat. Bloody cool.